Hello, goddess, and welcome to this week's Thankful to Thrive Thursday. My name is Rochelle Richard, and if you are new to my channel here at Empowerment Experiences, we look for and find our power all along this, which is each our own self-love empowerment journey. And as well, dear goddess, if you yourself find yourself to be on a twin flame journey, or as I like to call it, a healing twin flames journey, then you are very much anchored in a self-love empowerment journey. That is exactly what you are on, goddess. If you are knowing that you are on this twin flame journey and you are longing for him and you are pining for him and you are missing him, I'm here to tell you, goddess, it is because you are missing you. A twin flame journey is about coming home to you. It's about coming into union within yourself because the only way to ever align for and come into union with your divine masculine is to come home to union within yourself. Because if your twin is you, then that means to truly, truly love you. And that's what we are on this journey to do. It's so incredible when I meet and speak with clients and has been since even before learning I was on this twin flame journey. How many goddesses out there who on the surface think they love themselves. They dress up, they fix their hair, they put their makeup on. But really beneath all of that facade, they don't really love themselves when you get down to it. And that's what this is about really truly loving yourself and being really truly in that thriving space and being thankful to be thriving thankful for you and your journey and all the amazing that is you and all the incredible that is your journey and that's really what the premise of thankful to thrive thursday is all about is being thankful to be thriving being thankful to have equal opportunity to thrive it's just up to you to make that decision to rise into thriving. I love how every, every time Super Sign Sunday or Twin Flame Tuesday or Thankful to Thrive Thursday comes up, it's just, again, just so in that, that energy of what I had been divinely led to create for my readings, or as I call them, empowerment messages every week all divinely guided and I know that the ego likes to freak out and say oh my goodness is it working I don't know if it's working oh my goodness are we ever gonna be together or is all this work I'm doing really making a change or I don't anything and everything right to undermine our progress to undermine celebrating yourself focusing on gratitude expanding more and more into thriving it always comes down to what we are focusing on and gratitude learning how to be grateful in all moments is such a superpower such a superpower because then you are setting your point of attraction you are tuning your tuner to attract more experiences for which to be grateful And so with that, the question that I am hearing, that I am feeling to ask is, in what way or ways is the Divine Feminine Collective being asked to anchor more into gratitude? In what ways can we be more grateful? What things are we being asked to focus on amplifying in terms of gratitude and appreciation? So there we go. <laughs> All that mouthful is what we're looking at here. In what ways is the Divine Feminine Collective being asked to anchor into and expand gratitude? By taking action, inspired action, really listening in, 
and taking that inspired action toward the things that feel good to you. Taking action toward the changes that you are wanting to make in your life. Being grateful that you are capable of making those changes, goddess. You see, so often we look at the changes, the, the outcome that we desire in our lives, and we, the ego likes to make this big mountain out of molehill, right? In fact, a whole mountain chain out of one little molehill, I swear, right? And it'll give you all these big scary reasons or all these overwhelming reasons for why, why it's just such an impossible idea and how it's so heavy and it's so much work and it's gonna be so exhausting. And oh, if you start working out, you're gonna be so sore for days. Oh, mine did that to me. And it's been, it has, you know, with my workout buddies and such, you know, and, and, and myself, it's been a little challenging, you know, to really develop that habit. However, it's knowing that that is often the case when you're developing a new habit, when you are really unlearning old ways and learning new ways, right? It's that you are that catalyst. And above and beyond all else, to hold space for yourself when you decide to change, when you choose to make what changes need making that actually align you with the outcome you desire. For instance, you want to be muscular, be toned, be in shape. Well, sitting on the couch all day and eating junk food is not going to get you that result. It's that simple. That's what we talk about stepping into better and better versions of yourself. It is literally you stepping into that next and next version of you that is embodied of the life that you desire to be living, of the version of yourself that you desire to be showing up as in this world. This is where we are right now, is for you really allowing yourself to step into that, being again grateful that you are capable, that you have the ability to completely renew yourself to, there's a word that is elusive in this moment, remake, you know, to completely remake yourself into who you know you are, to release all of these layers that keep you from stepping into you. It is, it is, it was definitely a challenge for me. And I'll tell you this, goddess, it was a challenge for me, a, you know, your all American white girl here to, you know, wear my Indian goddess wear out in public. It was a challenge at first, but at the same time, I have to tell you, it felt so good. It felt, it feels, what am I saying? It feels so good to be in, especially my saris. I loved, I wore my salwar out in public. The only reason I don't wear that is because it's one of a kind. I cannot get it anymore. And it's so stunning that I want to use it more for like here and such for videos and things like that. But my saris, you know, I have a few of those and there's more coming. You better believe it. Wearing those, especially wearing those out. I cannot explain it to you, but I am so comfortable in an Indian sari. It's just, it's not even funny, but it is funny. It's funny. Feel good. It's like, oh my goodness, you know, go figure. Girl from the sticks of Kansas. This is what she loves to dress up in and wear out in public. And I'm here to tell you, sister, when I do... The light that emanates from me because I am truly showing up in all of my wonder and all of my uniqueness, even though, yeah, again, there I am wearing <laughs> this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, attire from a country that is a part of my soul, as is my twin flame, of course. And every time I wear it out, I feel so sure of myself. I feel so amazing in it. I and I influence and impact the world around me. You know, a few weeks ago, there was that goddess who, because I was divinely led to make a wrong turn and then end up in a shop and then end up meeting this wonderful goddess who, because I wore my goddess wear, she actually bought her Egyptian goddess attire right there in that shop. They actually had it and she was just so thankful, so appreciative because I showed up in the world fully expressed as me that then empowered her 
to do the same. And that's what I'm here for, is to lead by example in that way. To be, to show you how to be my own best friend so that you yourself are being your own best friend because that, dear sweet goddess, is how we can be each other's friends. That's how we be friends. You know, we, in my realm, in my circle of people, of soul family and such, when you are in that low vibe space, you're you're just kind of bringing everybody down kind of thing, you're going to get called out for it. And it's going to be like, hey, wait a minute, this, this line of conversating doesn't feel good. You know, the story being told, whatever is being shared, it is about being grateful that you are among soul family, that when you say, hey, this topic of discussion, this where we are, the story, what if this isn't feeling very good, let's not continue down this path. And when the entire room agrees and says, yeah, I agree with that, it's, we, we also recognize that it's no offense to anybody. That's not, we're not taking that personal. It is about keeping each other accountable and not feeding these lower vibrations. When you're in a conversation with someone and what they're saying, you can feel it inside you. You can feel your energy going down and you can feel yourself starting to close off and you can feel like I, we were all sitting at the table and yeah, we were all partaking in our cannabis as we do. However, it was, it's, I started to feel very odd. And I even, I was telling one of my soul sisters today about it, who was there with us. We were all there together. And she says, I told her, I said, cause she brought it up too. And, and I told her, I said, it was the strangest thing. I said, I started to feel like the energies inside me started to feel very chaotic. And I even took a sip of my water, my water that I bring myself, right? And I, and I took a sip and I, for a minute, I literally had a thought in my mind that said, oh my God, someone spiked my water. And there I am in one of the safest places I could possibly be at this coffee shop. And, you know, throughout that afternoon, you know, people I definitely trust and there's no way someone spiked my water, but it was because of the energies that were just totally, and we were all feeling it. But that's what you'll find is when, when you really are tuned in and then you're around those who are also tuned in, you all are going to be able to recognize these things. And then therefore take that appropriate action to shift the energy, to shift the energy within yourself and shift the energy within that environment. Because just like ripples in a pond, when we each take that responsibility for our energy, for how we're showing up, then we are truly changing the world. We are taking that action just by we ourselves showing up and being that change, saying, I will no longer participate in these lower frequencies. I will not feed it, right? It is, again, about realizing that that is how you really become your own best friend because that is definitely something that we all tend to do, right? This anti right the antithesis to self-love not anti self-love but that that self-loathing and such or the superficial self-love right is that we are not really truly being our own best friend we're not really tapping in and tuning in and taking that necessary action that uh puts us in that space where we do feel good about ourselves, right? Where we do, <laughs> you know, honor and appreciate ourselves. But that's why I'm saying right now, the divine feminines are being asked to take that action accordingly of stepping into the habits and actions and, and, and spaces energetically, spiritually, physically, mentally that are necessary with and aligned with you being fully embodied in the life that you desire to be living. Again, being your own best friend. Wow, hello. That card just really, ooh, and that one. And well, there you go. One of the big ways, nature. Very much time for grounding. And that that is one of the ways, one of the biggest ways that you are going to know and be able to tune in to your own energy, right? Is to be grounding yourself, to be coming into this present moment, to be disconnecting, to be reconnecting, right? Disconnecting from the outside world, your regular environment, the people you usually hang out with and just going out into nature for a little bit. We actually, even out here in the Phoenix Valley, 
soul sister of mine just introduced me to a place I didn't even know was there. Um, it was, it's a preserve, a, a, somewhat of a wildlife preserve, swans and ducks and geese and rabbits and, and I don't even know what all else, right? So there is, it's, it was amazing. So I know that somehow, some way, somewhere, wherever you are, you can find some sort of nature. Even if that nature are your plants, putting your hands in potting soil and messing with, with plants, even if it's just a little something, something to be grounding yourself right now. That is definitely an action step for you to take in this time to really be able to ground into gratitude right that because that's what thankful to thrive thursday is about expanding those blessings and that's what happens right what you focus on is what expands and we do our and we all tend to be so very focused on doing the work and focused on our ascension and our expansion as a soul however we contribute to this in such a grand and profoundly simple way as to be in gratitude, to be focusing on blessings, to be expressing that appreciation for what is flowing into your life rather than focusing on what isn't yet in your life or even what is that you would rather not be. <laughs> What you focus on is what expands. And so that is, again, why you're being asked to take the inspired action to shift more and more into that gratitude space, even when, you know, things are very challenging for you, right? Being that leader in your own life, being that example for others to show that, look, just because the world outside is falling apart doesn't mean you have to. All right, showing up sure of yourself, confident, courageous, ready for whatever this matrix game is going to sh throw your way because you are strong enough for it. You are prepared for this. You can handle this. Okay. And right now, shine up, share your message. I just cut that on that card there. Oh, okay. So share your message when I said that. That's why that's jumping out. The shine your light deck. The work your light, shine your light. That's what I like to also call it, right? Work your light deck here. Our little light worker deck. In what ways then, right? We're being asked to take this action and... Well, okay then. Take this action and pivot and shift into really again being your own best friend okay and so wow so we have some definitely amplified cards so right now you're not again that self-love card upside down it means that you're not really loving yourself and by that i mean that self-care it's kind of lacking isn't it goddess it's kind of lacking so it's so important i assure you your life is going to be so much more easeful i'm not saying easier but more easeful for you if you are filling your cup. You're not gonna be so wired, so short-tempered, so exhausted, because I don't know about you, sweetheart, but when I am exhausted, my defenses are down, my offenses are all jacked up. It's just almost chaos in, in myself because I'm just tired, right? And this is why that rest is so important for you, allowing yourself that time because why you are birthing this new age now why is this card upside down to amplify this because you've not really been dreaming that new world into being have you goddess you've not really been getting clear on the vision that you desire um that just hit me as well because i'm like you know and really writing it out really taking that time to dive into what your vision looks like you're just kind of half-assing it are you just kind of winging it like, well, that one's kind of nice. That would be okay. Your responsibility when it comes to manifesting is to get as clear as you can about your vision, to be in it, to feel into it, to, to embody it. And of course, to detach from it. I know it's, it's, it can be a catch 22, right? It, it took me a moment to get a grasp on what that was about. And we dive more into this in my empowered with Rochelle, all access pass and those group 
group coaching sessions and such. I have my, what I call, like to call my Pegasus Power Program. Uh, you know, finding your strength to spread your wings and fly, right? Your, um, because a Pegasus, right, is a, a very powerful workhorse, right? Doing that work necessary to really spread those wings and take flight into this world and really step into that new way of being. Oh my goodness, this is totally, again, what we're talking about today. You stepping into this new, new this, this vision that you desire because, and, and here's where we are, goddess. Here's where the divine feminines are. I know the masculines are off doing their thing and, and living out their karma and they have their work to do, right? Because we each have our own independent, independent work as well as union work. Right now, we're working on our independent work, our individual work, okay? And I get it. I get that it just feels as though all that vision that you had is just shattered and is laid waste in, in shattered pieces all around you. I get that. Obviously, that's been how I've viewed mine for a while. There has been definitely some energetic, some, some things happening between my counterpart and I. Oh, have I been feeling it? And there's been oh, some clues some breadcrumbs the universe has led me to. I'm like, you are sneaky <clears throat> that the universe has led me to, to show me some things kind of like, what? So there's things happening. However, it's still being in that space of being detached, that realizing that it, the attachment equates to addiction. That's what it is. An addiction is an attachment to something. And it's an, it's an excessive attachment to something, right? That's what an addiction is. And so we are clearing ourselves of these addictions. And again, stepping into that new way of being, that, that version, that fully embodied version of yourself that is grateful for her life, is grateful for herself, is her own best friend. And how are we doing this? really through that grounding and focusing on those blessings, right? So trust your path. Journal this, goddess. Again, this is part of that, really getting clear. So this is <laughs> how these cards are just, again, telling this beautiful story today. I love it. So this is it, right? Dreaming your new earth into being. So trust your path. This is what you're being asked. This right now, we asked how how can the divine feminines be shining their light right now? And you know what? Your words have power. Your vision is so powerful. Once you create, once you design that vision, the universe says, all oh, right, let's get to work. So your responsibility, your work right now, goddess, is to ask yourself, write this question at the top page of, of, of a page in your journal. If I knew, wait, let me rephrase it. Knowing that I am supported, what would I like to do? What is my desire for that which I would like to experience? Okay, so knowing I am fully supported, what would I like my life to look like? Knowing I am fully supported, what would I like my life to to look like that's that's your work right now goddess is asking that question for yourself all right oh my goodness that was that was really really good let me put these back in the basket up here and so divine masculine with again the things that are are happening in the Divine Feminine Collective, as well as, again, what is happening with the Divine Masculine, off doing their thing and really throwing the Divine Feminines for a loop, because that loop is to be bringing the Feminines, again, home to themselves, home to themselves. That's why he rejects you the way he does because he is rejecting himself. And, and dear goddess, so are you. In some way, shape or form, at a deeper level, 
you are. And so how do you, when you can't, when you're not getting the clear answer, because you're overthinking it, right? You're trying to do it from a control space rather than an allowing or surrender space. That's the key though, is you, you've got to shift out of that control space and into that surrender space and allow space. So how do you do that? When you don't know exactly what this is that you're running from, well, you just focus on the being your best friend, the filling up your well, that self care, because that is you in receptive mode. And so when you're in receptive mode, the answers are gonna come a whole hell of a lot easier than when you're in control mode and resistant and trying to, you know, trying to have power over everything that you don't actually have power over, right? That's, that's closing off, as Abraham likes to say, right? Closing off your valves to all these other, or from, to and from all these other energetic pipes in your life. So you focus on loving you, filling your well. And with that, I am very eager to hear what the Divine Masculine, as we begin to inquire, what is the Divine Masculine message right now? Is he's really missing his Divine Feminine? He is feeling her, that I can tell you right now. He is feeling her in one way, shape or form, maybe dreaming of her. <laughs> laying up late at night in bed next to his wife or his girlfriend or you know in the life that he has and wondering why why he couldn't choose you yet knowing that he wants to <laughs> he says patience Patience with him, patience with yourself, patience with this journey. Focusing on you and where your power is, which is focusing on you and your success. Realizing that you are a success. Embodying this success energy of shifting from lack into abundance that's what success is and in fact i'm i'm hearing and feeling that that's the other thing that you need to be journaling about right now goddess is what does success look like for you huh what does success really look like for you number one one success question number two is are you afraid of that and why 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 so and we would even in my ewr we would even dive into that if you wanted to so those in the ewr all access pass know that that we can dive into that success question because i know i know goddesses who come to me are also again of course you're looking to be stepping into your twin flame mission right which that falls in very much into the success category and that is Obviously, there's a reason that just came up there is because that's what the masculine is encouraging you, nudging you towards, again, focusing on what lights you up. What would you do knowing that you are supported? What would you be doing knowing you were fully supported? You didn't have to worry or fear about any lack. Hmm? Let's see here. Angel numbers. Let's see it. I, I uh, was feeling a bag pull today for sure. A bag pull. Let's see what we have. Boom, boom. Ooh, 22. And I'm feeling one more here. One more here. Let's see. And we'll jump in and see what they say. Ooh, and 414. Let's just have a look, see here. And of course, as I'm getting to this, I ask you go ahead and like the video. And if you're not already subscribed, please, by all means, uh, hit that subscribe button. And of course, my favorite thing that I really, really love 
is for you to comment. I'd love to know you were here. I love to know when things that come through me impact you and influence you and inspire you. That's what I'm here for, truly. Angel number 22, courage and strength. Oof, energies of your biggest dreams and deepest desires with nothing beyond your reach. Wow, wow. Birthing a new age, that new earth rising goddess. Your biggest dreams and deepest desires again knowing you're supported what would you love to be how would you love for your life to be what would you love for it to look like oh reconciliation between twin flames what hello patience card right here right mm, 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 mm. discernment to disengage with conflict or discord both within and without Wow, again, that is this thankful to thrive. Thursday is focusing, right? Being your own best friend is one of the most fundamental ways of focusing your attention on things for which you can be grateful, even when it's hitting the proverbial fan. Disengaging with those lower vibrations. So you, and that is, that's what is so often overlooked and made, that's why the, the ego complicates things. It's really not complicated. It's really quite simple. Again, I'm not the one to tell you something is easy when it's not, when it's challenging, right? It's challenging. Challenging doesn't mean it's easy. Challenging means you're going to be tested and you are going to be challenged so that you grow. But something that is simple means, well, that just, you know, like it seems simple to drive a car or ride a bike. You're just steering the wheel and pushing the pedals, right? Steering the handles and right. However, the actual implementation of it is a whole, <laughs> whole nother experience, right? There's all those other factors. And that is something here, one of the most easeful ways of really shifting into being your own best friend is to just stop feeding the negative. Like I've said so often about watering the weeds versus growing the garden. So focus on the gratitude because gratitude's in the garden. It's not gonna be over there in the weeds. And then we also have 414, Tr well, okay. Big bold letters, trust. You are being divinely supported. Oh my, oh my gosh, I love this. Trust your path. Trust you are being divinely supported. Oh my God, let go of what you cannot control. Be the change and focus where your power is. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, and the look, embodying optimism and self-confidence leads to a happy, successful, and fulfilling experience. I'm just like, oh my goodness, this just, oh, I just, I love this. I love this so much. I love this so much. Goddess, I love this. And so therefore, there we have it. Thankful to Thrive Thursday is again, even the divine masculine as he's, you know, stirring, shall we say, energetically stirring, like, man, what have I done here? What am I doing? I, she really was that light in my life. And, uh, you know, however, I am not that reader that's going to sit here and say, oh, he'll be back in this amount of time or, you know, because everything still comes down to divine timing. And I talk about divine timing in a video as well as my 17 day self-love empowerment challenge, which is free. The 17 day self-love empowerment challenge is the challenge that you need, goddess. Once you get that confirmation checklist and you have verified in however many billions of ways that we do, and I say we because I did it too, that he is your twin flame, then you are really very much looking for that to, to feel empowered on this journey. And so that 17 day self-love empowerment challenge is exactly that. And again, we talk about divine timing. We talk about detachment. We talk about gratitude. We talk about good vibe givers and forgiveness and shifting timelines. We talk about that, of course, cultivating self-love, uh, the, the twin flame mirroring, self-love mirroring, 
there's so many things in these 17 days just packed in there for you to begin reclaiming your power. And that's just the very tip of the iceberg for really reclaiming your power on this journey so that no matter what he is or is not doing or ever does or does not do, that you are living your, your best life for you. You're being your own best friend because staying in that, no matter what he ever does or do, does or doesn't do, is the path, is the space of alignment that aligns you with union, that puts you in that place and space that when he then gets aligned, because that's the key here, you get into that vibrational state, he gets into that vibrational state, and then that union happens, but not before then. And this means you have to get to it and maintain it regardless with what he's doing and i know the ego is going to go oh but oh my god you have fucked it up all the times that you've been purging and you've been no no that's part of the journey of getting there is releasing these heavier energies within ourselves through the purge every time we purge we're releasing it we're letting it go we're letting it flow through and from us to create space for better to expand within us and therefore from us <coughs> water please okay. yum oh my goodness so with that goddess that is very much this week's thankful to thrive thursday i will put the link below for you to get the confirmation checklist and of course the 17 day challenge it's all one big beautiful union of a free <coughs> excuse me free experience that you can have with me in that way and um there was something else oh yes all those links <laughs> they will be down below in the description and of course, you can check out the EWR, or that's what we call it, the Empowered with Rochelle All Access Pass for when you are ready to go all in and create the change in your life that you are ready for, that you are like, you know what? I'm ready to get myself to this vibration where I need to be, to be really diving into the work with someone who has been through the ringer and someone who's twin flame herself actually very much chose that that generational curse karmic path and, that he's on of forced marriage and such um thinking that if he just does what he's told it'll get better well we look at the collective and what's going on in the mainstream narrative and we know that is not true that simply complying to someone else's demands uh via whatever means is not gonna just make things better it actually digs that hole deeper deeper and deeper and deeper that we have to crawl out of but we are all doing that individually and collectively and success is definitely the outcome that we are all aligning with I assure you right now so for you when you are truly ready to dive in I am here for you definitely uh, you can comment below you can again go sign up you can contact me through my website empowermentexperiences.com you can also of course check out ewr or empowered with rochelle it's called at empowerment experiences slash ewr again all those links are going to be down below and i'm going to go ahead and let you go my name is rochelle richard thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time with me and I am truly grateful for you. And I am grateful for any and all bit of information that comes through me that benefits you because you're why I'm here. This is why I'm here. And to remind you that the power, it is in your hands, goddess. I promise you it is in your hands because it has always been inside you. And namaste.